and we are back in our ML and DevOps track. Um, so uh, early that earlier today, uh, we talked about transferring the ML operations from a local computer to a cluster. Now we're taking kind of a step back uh, because, well, an ML engineer is still on his or her laptop. There's uh, like hundreds, thousands of experiments going on because uh, you need to experiment to get things right finally at a later date. Uh, Dmitry Petrov is ready to tell us how to track all those thousands of experiments with contemporary tools like Git and DVC. Dmitry, I welcome you on stage. Thank you. Thank you. Today we are going to talk about uh, machine learning experiment tracking with uh, VS Code, Git, and DVC. Uh, as we discussed, it will be about like your local experience when you can track hundreds and thousands of your exper experiment on your machine in VS Code, but not necessarily on your laptop. It might be like in a cloud and such, right? Because VS Code is uh, uh, web base and many companies use this in the cloud. Uh, so our goal is to get the table with dozens and hundreds of your experiments in your VS Code experience uh, next to your uh, source code. So that's that's the goal. This is like what we need to reach uh, to track all the experiments with all the hyperparameters, all the metrics, uh, while you are still working with uh, VS Code within IDE with all your code and common line experience like all together. So that's the goal. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I was a data scientist at Microsoft Bing about like five-ish year ago. And later I created a DVC, open source project data version control. Uh, you just saw some discussion around open source project and such. So DVC is like one of those like open source projects with a community and uh, a lot of people are using this uh, this tools. So I'm on data scientists. Did, did anyone try DVC or use DVC? Anyone? Yeah. Thank you. Good. So yeah, and a bit later we created a, a company, Iterative AI. Uh, we focus on AI yeah, infrastructure, and we are building tools uh, to help data scientists. So data versioning, data management is always our like a key focus and this is why we are kind of well known in the industry but at the same time on dvc we help people to track the experiment manage pipeline and today i will be focusing more on experimentation capabilities and how to get this uh, experimentation experience right on this uh, vs code and use git as a primary source of truth so uh, first of all we will uh, talk about the experiment tracking in general like why do, do we need to track, what was the history like, and uh, such. And the uh, next part of the talk would be about the, uh, a demo, basically. Uh, we will see how we can use this uh, uh, knowledge and experience to track experiment with the tool that you are already familiar with, right? With uh, IDEs and uh, specifically Git, uh, which will be used as a source of truth for uh, your ML experiment. So, uh, experiment tracking. Uh, does anyone have experience with experiment tracking tools, such like MLflow, weight and biases, Sacred, whatever? All right, yeah, <laughs> quite a few people. So, uh, one more. <laughs> Uh, so uh, let's uh, let's do some introduction for maybe like five seven minutes uh, for the folks who might be not too familiar with the tools, or with experiment tracking. So first of all, when you build models, uh, you need to run uh, dozens, hundreds, sometimes thousands of experiments. You need to keep track of all the metrics you got, uh, hyperparameters you use, source code you changed. And uh, with a reasonable number of experiments, like five, 10 in one single day, it's kind of manageable. Maybe like a piece of paper and a pencil, it's enough, right? This is like what I did maybe like 10 years ago. Uh, but uh, in the reality, in the industry, it kind of doesn't scale, doesn't work really well, right? Because you are running like dozens of experiments, you need to 
uh, collaborate with your teammates. Uh, you need to share the best ones. And this is when like everything breaks, uh, breaks apart. And uh, like what, what do you need from the experiment? First of all, we need to like lock off the experiments. What did I run today, yesterday, a month ago? Uh, set of hyperparameters, code changes, like all the uh, artifacts related to the experiments uh, needs to be someone uh, somehow logged in on your, I don't know, paper or some automated system. Uh, we need a, some centralized place when we can share this data, uh, this information with teammates, right? So I run hundreds of experiments and maybe two, three experiments uh, might be interested for my teammates, right? I need to share. I need, I need to be able to share those three somehow, uh, hopefully not, not through a Slack or email. And at the end of the day, we need reproducibility. So, if, so I don't want to waste time to reproduce the experiments I, uh, I, I, I've done last, last week, right? Uh, because sometimes it takes hours, sometimes uh, even more. So this reproducibility and organization component of this experimentation part is a crucial for, in a, especially in a team, settings in uh, production settings. So the first tool I have seen, uh, maybe it's just not the first tool, so uh, if you know the first, it's, it will be great to, to know. Uh, it was sacred. It was a long time ago. Uh, if you are in the field for a while, you probably know this, uh, this tool. Uh, and uh, the idea of the tool is to have the track of your experiment, uh, instrument your code uh, with a library, right? Sacred, sacred library. Uh, which uh, log in all your runs into some centralized, da centralized database with a, a web interface on top. So each experiment uh, gets it, it, its own ID, right? And now and then you log like hyperparameters, metrics uh, together. So you get this like a beautiful table. I mean, beautiful. It's for 2014, I believe it was a beautiful table uh, in uh, this centralized uh, centralized place. In addition to this, you can put some more meaningful artifacts. Let's say metrics might be not enough, right? You need like some the entire plot to understand like details of your like last loss function or area under the curve or any any uh, uh, images uh, that you need. So that was the idea, and this idea took off, and multiple uh, tools, uh, multiple companies start using this approach and building their own. Uh, their uh, experimentation tool set, like TensorBoard, uh, MLflow, and such. So, like a lot of tools appear so, like a little bit later when it becomes clear that this is a common pattern of uh, collaborating with experiments in, inside the team. So, um, that's a very typical uh, infrastructure, right? Architecture of this tool. So, so uh, you got a database. First of all, it's a library on the client side, and this library streams data to some database. Uh, about all your runs, uh, with all the artifacts attached to the to the runs. So on the, on top of the database, there is uh, some web application, uh, so it can be set up on your machine, right? And you like run your experiments right here, and all the information there. Or maybe on a team settings, you have this database in in a, inside the company, right? And stream there, so everyone see that's your. Uh, your experiment. So very usual infrastructure uh, and uh, source code lives like outside it in git or some types of like a git storage and later some company come up with the idea of creating a saas like combining all these pieces together except source code of course uh, and you have you got this like a service like waiting biases or such right uh, when you log in maybe pay for like paid account or use free account and then like stream your metrics and get the uh, have this uh, good uh, UI on top. So this is kind of a state of the art today, and like a lot of companies are using this uh, settings and this architecture uh, for experiment tracking. So in iterative, we are asking the question like, okay, but this makes our infrastructure a little bit complicated. So we need to make uh, set up additional service, we need to set up additional or, or, or a SaaS service, and we need to like manage uh, this functionality. First question. The second question is, when you run thousands of experiments, like, does it make sense to like stream all the information in this central database? 
does your team really know, really need to know like all the thousand runs you have? And to our opinion, it's uh, that's probably uh, not necessarily in majority of the scenario because experiment tracking tool it kind of play the role of uh, debugger, if you wish. Uh, and in majority of the cases, from 1,000 experiments, you usually need only one, two, maybe four to share with the team. The rest is like your own business, and you just run it, and until you come up with a meaningful result, uh, it's, your team is not really interested on, the, on, 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 the, on this stuff. And we are thinking, what, how about we are making this information and moving this uh, information to the, your local experience instead of centralized one. And your local experience is usual ID, right? You might use like PyCharm, West Code, VI with a common line. But this is your usual environment, and probably this environment is enough to keep track of your 1,000 of experiments. Yes, you still need to uh, move some particular ones, right, to share with the team. But for, uh, for uh, dozens and thousands of experiments, it might be not needed. And the result of this might be like just environment when you have like your source code, Common line and uh, all, all experiments all together, so developing experience can be simplified. And uh, the idea is uh, let's use let's replace this web UI with just UI with VS Code, right? Build a plugin in VS Code and visualize the experiment runs. And yeah, let's use a Git to share the experiments your team cares about. After like 1,000 experiments, the three experiments your team care about can be shared through like Git, through Git uh, branches and such. So that's the idea we come up with, and we spent a lot of time to build this uh, experience uh, with code extension uh, to, uh, to get it. Uh, right, so, uh, and in this sense, your infrastructure can be simplified, right? Because uh, all you use with this approach is uh, with code, with, uh, with a plugin, in your local environment, or maybe in the cloud, and Git as a, a sort of truth for the experiment that you share with a small amount of experiments your team, your team uh, cares about. So, and we believe this is a major problem of MLOps today because every single MLOps solution introduced like a piece of infrastructure that you need to uh, set up, manage, and connect with other tools, uh, but with uh, using Git instead, instead of additional pieces of, in of the infrastructure, you can potentially simplify the way how your entire MLOps infrastructure works. So that's the idea, and I'll show you like how, uh, uh, what we got and how it looks like uh, in a real settings. So again, the goal, the high-level goals are uh, improve developing experience to put everyone, everything in an IDE. Uh, we are simplifying infrastructure MLOps infrastructure, and I use Git as a single source of truth. So that's the idea of DevOps, GitOps, uh, of using Git as a centralized place of collaboration uh, with uh, software in software projects. All right, uh, let's go to the demo part. I have one project. So the first part of the demo will be based on the web UI, on experience. I have already some projects set up uh, to make it like faster. And the second part will be about the uh, Git and uh, how to use Git for, for this experience. All right, that's our VS Code. VS code. Is it okay to, okay. I hope it's, uh, it's good to, see, uh, to have a dark mode. Uh, so, uh, that's a project with, uh, okay, let me show you the source code, right? So, regular project, some modeling functionality here, like that simple model, just to like run it fast, right? NLP, traditional machine learning with the tabular data, so nothing uh, fancy, but it trains very fast. So, that's, that's why it's simple. Uh, so to get this experience, of course, we need to set up the uh, uh, VS extension that I was mentioned. Uh, so VS extension, uh, the extension can be set up through like a usual uh, extension list, right? Uh, in this palette, you can set up some, for example, extension for Docker, right? Or GitHub pull request extension. And at the same time, we, we build this uh, DVC extension uh, 
It was released like just a few months ago. Uh, it already has quite a few installation, a few thousand. So you install the uh, extension and you will get this uh, simple thingy on the side, right? So this is a DVC specific functionality in VS code that helps you to uh, manage data. But today we are not talking about data, we are talking only about experiments. And helps you to manage your experiments. And this is, uh, that's how. So, a uh, regular repository with uh, a few branches, and each branch has some uh, metrics inside. Metrics means just a regular metrics JSON file that DVC you know this is a metric file. This is how the, this information was pulled to the, to the table, and this is how we can distinguish like JSON from the metrics JSON. Uh, the same with the uh, hyperparameters, right? So there is a uh, uh, params YAML, it can be YAML, JSON, whatever, uh, with some structure, uh, some section. It's super random. You can like put any advanced structure here. In reality, you'll get maybe hundreds of hyperparameters. In this example, it's uh, a bit less. Uh, this part is data, a data version, data hashes. Uh, again, we are not talking about data and can exclude data part from the view uh, by, this, uh, by the settings. So that's the experimentation experience you can get on your IE, right? The cool part is uh, there are no services attached. It's like complete serverless, right? Uh, it's uh, all based on your repository, uh, files, metrics files, hyperparameter files in your repository, uh, no external services, no external logins, uh, no databases, so everything is uh, in your experience, everything is managed 100% by you. So uh, let's uh, have a look at how it works. So let's say we have this experiment uh, uh, and, oh yeah, one more thing is uh, the images, right, like plots and st such, so metrics is not enough, of course. And this functionality, of course, also in here. So that's how it looks like. Uh, you can visualize any uh, uh, simple plots, like in a JSON or TSV format, and it can uh, visualize uh, visualize those as uh, as a graphs. Uh, you can you can get some more advanced functionality. We support like a, a few uh, simple. Uh, simple cases with uh, uh, with plots like a confusion matrix here, right? You can see the when you miss the class. So this is binary classifier. And if your plot is special, uh, you just like dump the file, and the file can be like picked up. Uh, if you specify in a DVC, it can pick picked up uh, and show it like right here. So sometimes instead of like uh, using some format, those format, formats are simple, but still, sometimes you don't want to deal with external formats, you just like dump the image, and that's it. If the image or data is like a big, uh, and you don't want to commit this to Git repository, it makes sense, right? And uh, in this sense, uh, DVC data helps you to put data in a cloud and uh, manage uh, pointers uh, to the images instead of the actual ones. All right, oh yeah, by the way, we can compare the plots, right? So if you choose like a different, uh, another experiments, you'll see the differences. You can see like three, three five, ten experiments all at the same time and compare, uh, compare them. Uh, so that's, again, very usual functionality that you have seen like multiple times in experiment tracking tool, but on the IDE, uh, not in a, in a SAS. So that's the idea. All right, now let's try to run some experiments. So, uh, so let's say, let's try to run this one, this experiment, and modify this a little bit. So we are modifying, let's say, number of estimators, uh, feature, num number of feature, click OK, and it asks, OK, uh, maximum features now it's 200, let's increase it a bit. Uh, estimators 50, uh, let's do the same. So now it, it, it runs uh, the experiment. So that's another difference with a multiple experiment tracking tool. So 
when you have the experience in your machine, right, it's very easy to connect the experiments to compute because it's like right here. And in this sense, uh, you, we are connecting the computer and you can run the experiments right away. So what happens under the hood when you uh, change the hyperparameters, uh, the plugin uh, modify the hyperparameter file, right, uh, and execute uh, the experiment. In this case, it just run DVC run, but it's like simple, like Python train or something uh, under the hood. So that's the experiments we got. Uh, it has some uh, checksum, right, like a uh, kind of attack, uh, time, uh, so please ignore I am, it's uh, my time zone. And the regular uh, numbers, right? Uh, numbers that we have, uh, so you can analyze like how good this experiment is, right? And the hyperparameters, so we, we change feature, max features, right? 200, now it's 250, and the accuracy was uh, slightly better. So let's compare those two. That's the difference, right? So you can go deeper to uh, precision recall curve. Uh, you can uh, take a look at the uh, matrix, confusion matrices, or any artifacts you provide us. Sometimes you can just, uh, for example, output some images when you misclassified uh, classes, for example. Uh, so it's, it's a very convenient to have this uh, functionality, especially like in a local uh, experience. So that's, uh, that's the idea, uh, and again, that's uh, the experience we got, it's like, it's, it's right here. And in addition to the tracking the parameters, tracking the metrics, uh, we can modifi modify the code, and the DVC snapshot your code uh, through Git, just because it works on top of Git, right? So that's another, uh, difference with a uh, regular experiment tracking tool because an experiment tracking tool usually kind of a snapshot the check some of your uh, of your uh, Git repository, which might be actual, might be not. But here we use like Git under the hood, so you cannot uh, separate the co code and the experiment. Okay, let me show you how it uh, works. Let's say we got this experiment right, and we can jump to the source code uh, and changes a little bit. So let's make some like simple dummy change. Max depth, I don't know, maybe. So any source code change, right? It might be like some refactoring. It might be you can might, you can apply a different model or whatever, and then you run uh, DVC again. So you can run this through pilot, pilot right? This is a way to run. Uh, and interact with VS Code. So DVC run. Oh, it's not a pile. DVC run experiment. So it runs again. So the code was modified, and let's look at the table. So here we go. The second experiment, this is like 3D, uh, with a new set of metrics, the same set of hyperparameters, but with a different code, right? And because we run on top of Git, we can easily uh, uh, we can easily identify the changes in the source code and uh, track the source code together with the with the set of hyperparameters. So, and those two things is. Uh, uh, kind of, it's the same entity basically in this in the system. You cannot like distinguish this. You cannot like uh, separate this, which makes uh, these processes very reliable in terms of like tracking changes. Because usual problem with experiment tracking, you have a lot of experiments, a lot of uh, hyperparameter changes at the same time. Uh, no one is actually tracking the uh, code and code changes. So that's a usual uh, problem with the uh, with the tracking tool. All right. That's a uh, high-level idea, uh, how, to, how to get this experience. Uh, again, there is uh, nothing special here. You just use a regular way of uh, tracking uh, uh, experiments. Uh, there is a library, a Python library, 
uh, we call DVC Live. You import the library. Uh, if you use any experimentation tool, you probably have seen many of those. And in this library, you log uh, your numbers like this. Uh, Parameter uh, matrix name, and then the value of the matrix. You log your hyperparameters. In our case, we just like output the entire uh, uh, hyperparameter file as a set of hyperparameters. And you can specify the uh, visuals. In this case, uh, this is our uh, rock, uh, rock plot. And the last one is just. Uh, uh, image that we need to specify. This image is special, so it's a part of the experimentation experience. We need to uh, see the image in the table here, right? So that's that how it how it uh, looks like. And after this code is instrumented and it's run uh, through a DVC experiment, so that's uh, how you got uh, the table here. All right. So this is uh, the, I would say, web part, uh, and how we visualize, uh, visualize our table, how we keep track of this uh, experiment. So that's right in your ID with a serverless experience, no additional services except your uh, GitHub, uh, which tracks the code. So now we'll talk about um, uh, Git and how Git help us with experiment tracking uh, functionality. We'll see how, how Git is used under the hood uh, of, this, of this approach. All right. Uh, on the table, uh, there is a bunch of, uh, on a high level, you see a bunch of uh, uh, branches, Git branches, uh, and the small ones are Git commits. If you look at the, uh, one second, let's do terminal right here. If you look at the branches, you, you won't see those, uh, those small thing uh, uh, in a Git. Why? Because we're trying to like, hide this, because when you run with thousands of experiments, you probably don't want to see, don't want to uh, see thousands of branches, right? It's easy like, to get lost. And some Git internals are used to kind of like manage and like hide uh, this uh, this experiments a little bit, uh, so to not to confuse uh, the users. But in fact, those are a regular Git commits, and you can apply the same operation to this experiment as you do for your uh, usual Git experience. An example might be: let's look at the difference between those, for example, this commit, right, which we made recently and the uh, uh, branch uh, which we use as a foundation for the, for the experiments. So git diff, and this is, oh, sorry, that is the branch name, and this is our experiment, and let's look at the difference in the source code. So here you go. The change I made in the source code uh, is right here. And again, like, I, we didn't do like, any like, fancy stuff, we just like do the change, uh, run experiments, here you go. It snapshots uh, your source code, it snapshots your hyperparameters, everything is properly tracked in your experiment table. So that's the beauty of this approach. And you use the same set of git commands uh, in order to track, uh, uh, to track and use this uh, information. So you can look at the, let's say, parameters. So the same. Uh, so split, you can ignore it, it's kind of the same number, but DVC decided to change, to, to remove the zero for some reason. Uh, maximum feature size, so we change in the previous experiment, right, right, and run code change after this, so, and we got this like 250 uh, maximum features and number of estimators was changed, so again, everything is here, everything is properly tracked by, uh, by Git uh, as we usually track source, uh, source code in the uh, in software project. So to share this experiment, uh, to share this experiment, uh, and not all the 1,000, as we discussed, right? You probably don't want to share all the 1,000 experiments with, uh, to overwhelm your team, but you need to share some particular one. 
right? So this experience can be shared through uh, regular uh, branches. So each of the experiments you made can be promoted as a branch with a given branch name, and you can easily like push it to the your Git uh, Hub, GitLab, or whatever uh, Git service you use. So in this way, you can collaborate with the team using the same idea of pull request, right? So I run on my I'm doing some modeling work. I run uh, a few dozens of experiments. I found that a couple of those are useful one, and I promote this in a couple like a pull request for my teammates. So they look at the two pull requests uh, using a regular Git experience, GitHub or GitLab experience, uh, without looking at two dozens of other experiments I run. It's kind of like a my uh, business, my debugging uh, environment that no one probably should spend time on. So that's, that's the idea of this, uh, uh, this uh, approach to use uh, Git as much as possible and uh, make a Git and GitHub uh, a collaboration tool for the team uh, in ML team, right? So uh, use the same set of practices for the uh, ML team as you use for your engineering team. All right, so that approach helps uh, I aim to help with uh, using Git in MLOps settings, in AI settings. Uh, it's usually de designed for ML engineers, uh, not necessarily like data scientists. Data scientists have a little bit special workflow. But if you use, uh, if you run your modeling work, if you use Git for tracking your source code, that might be the way how you uh, track the experiments. So it's uh, help you to leverage your Git and Git skills in your team. Uh, the skills that you probably already have, or if you don't, you probably should. Uh, it helps your teams uh, to collaborate better, to bridge, to break the wall between the engineering departments, the DevOps teams, and the ML modeling teams. And it also helps uh, businesses to leverage and utilize uh, the investment you already made in uh, GitHub, uh, uh, or Git ecosystem in general, and it helps you to be more productive as a business. So thank you. Uh, would be great to hear your opinion about the approach, and I'm open for the questions. Uh, thank you, and just a reminder that uh, we're awarding the best question with a prize, and. I already see a hand raised, so please, the mic. Um, hello, thank you for the speech. I like the idea of like reducing the number of the tools and the stuff. My question is about um, how you kind of connect your experimentation. Uh, is there a way to connect your exp uh, exact experiment to the model deployed and then use the setting and the accuracy and the metrics of your deployed model at the time of monitoring to compare, for example, the performance at the experimentation time or the training time um, mm -hmm. versus the uh, mo monitoring one? It's my first question. I have another <laughs> one too. <laughs> let's, let's stop here for now, all right? Why? Because there are two parts on this question. One part is, uh, one part is how to connect uh, my experiments with the models, and second, how to connect this, exper uh, this the experiments with the online part, right? And in the reality, the online part might have uh, multiple deployments in a different. De for example, you might have like deployment in U.S., deployment in Australia, deployment in U.K., right? It's also different de deployments, and you need to kind of you like literally have a three different uh, models, right? With one actual artifact and one actual experiment. So I would say the second part is a uh, uh, tough one uh, in terms of developing experience, right? It's not about development, it's about deployment and monitoring. It's a, a bit different universe. So let's skip this part. <laughs> While the first part, it is related to the development experience, and of course there is a way to connect uh, this. And uh, yeah, first of all, each model in an ideal world, each model that you build needs to be connected to the uh, Git uh, checksum that was used to produce the model, right? That's uh, like the one-on-one of reproducibility. Otherwise, you won't be able to reproduce. If that requirement satisfies that, you're in a good shape, right? Because you have this, like, a very clear connection to the experiments, not experiments, to the source code, which in this case, experiments. 
uh, right? In this case, yes, uh, you can do the connection, and we have a separate project for model deployment, which aims to like uh, codify the models in your repository, right? On on the meta information level. But uh, the idea is, yeah, have all the pieces together and use a Git as a primary source of truth. Uh, yes, primary source of truth, and uh, with a Git uh, checksum as a pointer to the actual to the actual model. Yeah, but again, the deployment part is a bit different story, uh, but we can help connect uh, these two worlds. Okay, thank you. And um, my another question is about the storage, as I've, I've missed the first part. You use Git as a storage for, ex for images too, yes? What is the expected scale of the experiments, like the number that your tool will still meet our requirements? And what yes. is the uh, scale of the experiments? And uh, for example, we can not uh, log only the plots, but also like the images inside the experiment, inside different layers. Yep. Would you recommend us to use it or not? Uh, of course, it depends. Uh, but if your images are big enough, uh, probably it's that's not the best idea to store images in your Git repository, right? So, and there is a, the common way of doing this, like to codify the images, which means you put images in a cloud uh, with some um, ID file and file ID and uh, use file ID as a reference, right? And this is actually the basic DVC functionality for managing data, which is a bit separate story, but it's built in the, in the tool uh, itself. Uh, but yeah, you can codify the images, store images on the cloud, and connect on the commit level using this checksum. So in this sense, the scale is, I don't know, it can be like a one gigabyte 3D scan, no problem, <laughs> uh, if you are comfortable to uh, have them in a storage. In terms of the scale of the commits itself, uh, it's fine to have like a thousands of commits, no problem, uh, because those commits are not going to be like on your central repository, right? Because as we discussed, that's a debugger tool. So you run 1,000 experiments, and maybe like a couple of those will go to the repository. And the rest is like your own business. You can keep them, you can remove them, and manage as you, as you wish. Uh, just a reminder that if you are watching us online, and we accept uh, questions also on the Telegram chat and via the Telegram bot, so please feel free to send those to Telegram. Please. OK, thanks for your talk. Uh, my well, this seems to be the first time I see DVC in action. I'm here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because I was trying to understand. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's uh, a light like, right on top of you. Like, uh, uh, okay. You are believing uh, a bit for me. <laughs> uh, anyway, what happens if the model stays the same, the hyperparameters are the same, but the metrics are different because the data has changed? Does DVC track changes in data, not right. in the model itself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly like how you describe, right? <laughs> and uh, uh, the only tricky part is you need to specify what you care about in your experiments. Sometimes you care about the only hyperparameters, sometimes hyperparameters and source code, sometimes hyperparameters source, source, uh, source code and data. So and when you run DVC, it's kind of try to just understand the dependency change. If there is any, it runs the experiments. If not, no actions. Thanks. There's the one in front. Thank you for your presentation. I have a question about, uh, for example, you uh, showed uh, extension in VS Code, and uh, it it uh, has an opportunity to show um, uh, experiments uh, and uh, have opportunity to compare experiments. For example, if I have uh, I uh, have one experiment, some experiments. Can I share these experiments to another uh, ML engineer, for example? Uh -huh. Yes. Um, yeah, so you mean like uh, I have experiments here, right? Yes. And someone has this like. Can I uh, pull all the st full story f uh, from, for example, from Git to uh, yes. compare yeah, yeah. between, compare, um, for example, branches or experiments between. Uh, different experiments. So. Yes, right. Uh, yes, you can, uh, and there is like a few ways of doing this. Like one, like straightforward way and simple way. If you like some particular experiment, you promote it to the branch, push branch to the common repository, right? And you got a pull request, right? And you can 
show to your teammates, like this is pull request, the person can pull the pull request and like see your pull request in, in his or her own machine, right? That's like a straightforward way of doing this. Uh, a bit more advanced way, like if we connect it in like one network, you can just open network from me and I can pull the entire repository from you and get all 1,000 experiments from you. So it's like you have a Git as a source of truth and you can do like whatever you want with this. Uh, so I think this is it for the question part, but maybe you will have some discussions outside the That room. sounds good. Yeah. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank um, you. <laughs> we'll, need to, we'll, we'll need you to assign the prize for the best question now. Prize or the person? The person. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so the first person... Uh, we only have one. Yes, it might be not the fair, but because she asked two questions, but uh, one of those definitely was the best. <laughs> okay, that's uh, you know so two attempts. So no, no, no. Uh, with, with, with every lottery, that you you get better results if you participate more. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this product update video, please like and subscribe. Thanks, DB. And feel free to post comments and questions below. Beyond our tools themselves, we have many resources for you on your ML journey. Visit our docs, our blog for tutorials, our YouTube channel, our Discord server for support and community, and our free online course. You can find all the links to these resources in the description. Thanks for making it to the end. Devi and I will see you in the next video.